Hello YouTube's Grossama and here I have the Gundam H2 Magnum from Gundam Build Divers. Uh, I can honestly tell y'all I was super super hyped about this uh, kit mainly because I love the Gundam H2. Uh, you know all the different variations whether it's the Doe Bullet or it's even the Dark Hound. Um, I just think the H2 is a very, very good looking suit. It kind of reminds me of uh, Zeta. I think it really took a lot of inspiration from that suit. And uh, Zeta is one of my favorite uh, transformable suits as well as this one. So I, I was just really, really happy overall that this you know kit actually came out. Um, so without further ado, I just want to go ahead and jump right into the review. Okay, so before I start talking about the head, I just want to go ahead and let you know that there are some stickers that's going to be utilized for it. Uh, so right here, obviously, you're going to have some eye stickers, and then here you're going to have like it's like a little top um, sticker for the sensor on the, well, I guess it's a camera. It's either a camera or a sensor, and then right here is going to be the rear camera sticker right there. Now, obviously, you can just go ahead and paint, you know, however much you want. Uh, that's kind of like the route I always take. It's just like, hey, paint as much detail as I can uh, and just minimize the uses of stickers. So I went ahead and painted some uh, some black right inside. Um, it's really hard to see, but inside here, there's like an open space. So I went ahead and painted that black, and then I painted this little part right here green. I painted the eyes, obviously, and then the top sensor, which was supposed to be a sticker. I painted that, and then I painted these little parts right here black. Uh, and then obviously the back, uh, the rear camera, I painted that green. Now overall, the head design is pretty fantastic. I really, really love it. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say it's a better design over the original H2. I think they both have their own individual uh, merits, but this one looks really great and it keeps a great aesthetic uh, with the overall design. Uh, so you know, with that, you're gonna have a poly cap that is you know, basically just like every other high grade, especially in the age line. Okay, and taking a look at the body, uh, once again, there's going to be a sticker that needs to be utilized uh, right here for the centerpiece. Um, but, you know, I just went ahead and painted the inside of that. I think it came out pretty good. Now, keep in mind, I didn't top coat this kit yet, so it's going to have like a little bit of a glare. But once I put uh, a little dull top coat, well, I'll put a clear top coat, do some more panel lining, and then uh, I'll go ahead and put a dull top coat just so that way I can kind of uh, drown out uh, the shininess of the kit but it'll look good once you get that on there. And then you're also gonna have stickers that need to go inside here, but uh, I just went ahead and painted that black because they're raised uh, parts, so very, very easy to go ahead and paint. And nothing on the back, but uh, overall the back does look good. It's essentially the same parts uh, from the Gundam Age kit. Uh, actually, I don't think there's anything realistically different from this and the original uh, Gundam Age 2. Now you can get a little bit of a bend uh, with here because this is on a poly cap and it can definitely uh, twist and turn all the way. But if you go ahead and bring this part up, uh, you can definitely get a nice little ab crunch. Now this is primarily gonna be used for the transformation, but I go ahead and I, I, you know, I try and use it uh, when applicable. Uh, oops, just so that way I can get a little bit of a, um, I call it like a JoJo crunch, because you know a lot of JoJo characters have that like crazy, crazy ab crunch, but I think that looks pretty good. Um, just as long as you don't kind of like show it like on the side like that, because this is not an Iron Blood Orphans kit, so it, you know, the waist, uh, well I guess the abdomen uh, shouldn't be that skinny, even though this is already fairly skinny as it is. Okay, now looking at the arms, uh, the arms are pretty fantastic. The only new pieces I believe are gonna be uh, these top shoulders. Uh, those are a little bit different, and I wanna say the inside of these shoulders right here are different as well. Uh, I think just the overall shoulder is gonna be completely different, uh, but it looks like the forearm is all gonna be completely the same, and the hands are gonna be the same as well. So when talking about articulation, you get a nice little bend right up here, and you're gonna get a nice little elbow joint that comes out pretty far as well. And then the hand is gonna be on a little poly cap, so that's not any kind of issue. And then the shoulder part right here can pretty much swivel both ways. Now you will get different types of hands, so you get this nice uh, little closed fist. You get a really nice open hand as well. And lastly, you get two open hands that can be utilized to hold any weapons of his choice. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the waist real quick. Uh, the, only, the only noticeable difference from this and the H2 is going to be these front skirts right here, uh, which are really fine. You know, I don't really have any issue, even if it's going to be utilizing a lot of the old mold. Um, but overall, looks pretty good. You, you, I would say just cut them in half so that we can get uh, some individual posability with each one. And then right here on the side, you're going to get these little side skirts that can come all the way up, and these little parts can rotate forward, but they cannot rotate back. Um, they, actually, the whole piece can't rotate at all. 
And right here on the back, you can go ahead and get a little bit of a bend right there. And it's also gonna be holding uh, the beam saber hilts in the back skirt. Okay, so looking at the legs, uh, the legs are pretty fine. There's no noticeable issues or anything with them. Uh, the only noticeable pieces that's gonna be different is gonna be these front toes. I think maybe, I think these are actually brand, yeah, these are brand new as well. Uh, but overall, the legs are pretty much gonna be the same as the H2. Um, you get a pretty nice split, like so. And they're gonna go ahead and be able to bend up like that. Uh, really no no issues I mean these are obviously gonna fold forward like that for the transformation and then this part is gonna go ahead and bend like that for the transformation as well but overall I mean the legs are really really great you get a lot, a lot of posability out of them so thinking about dynamic poses you're really gonna be able to achieve that with this kit okay so let's go ahead and start taking a look at the F funnels which are these little funnel bits uh, these actually plug into the uh, the shoulders right here in these little pegs so you just go ahead and plug them in like that and these F funnels can actually be utilized as weapons so all you need to do is just go ahead and plug these into the hand uh, like so and then you put the uh, outer little like arm guard right on top and then you're gonna go ahead and have a nice little weapon that it can utilize for any kind of close range combat, uh, which seems kind of weird. I don't know, it's just like if they're funnels, you can control them wirelessly. Um, I don't see why you would actually utilize one as a weapon unless, I don't know, I guess it's like a last resort. Uh, but overall, it does look actually pretty cool in the hands. Okay, and the next weapon that it has is going to be uh, the Hyper Dodge Rifle Magnum. I think it's a pretty crazy name, but I mean, Dodge Rifle is kind of like the name of the original uh, H2 weapon. So this is kind of just like, a it's now a Magnum Dodge Rifle. Uh, so overall, it looks pretty good. You are going to have uh, stickers that need to be placed uh, right here. It kind of looks like eyes, which I think looks pretty cool. Uh, but you're going to have these two stickers right there. And then you're also going to have this little sticker right here, uh, which should be for the uh, the underside uh, which is going to be the scope if I can just zoom in or not zoom in but there we go uh, so that's gonna be a sticker that should be going right there but honestly you can just go ahead and paint those parts if you wish now all you have to do to plug this in is just gonna slide it right into the hand like so and then just pretty much squeeze this part right here uh, so that way it's gonna be tight with the hand intact so before we actually get on to the transformation, we got one more weapon to show before we get into that, and that's going to be the little beam sabers. So you do get two beam saber effect parts and two, two beam saber hits, hilts, so all you're gonna do is just connect them, and then you can plug them right into the hand, like so. Okay, so before I get into the transformation, I just want to mention that it actually does come with a stand, uh, but I already have the diver gear, so I'm not going to be utilizing this stand for the review, uh, but just want to let you know that it is going to come with a stand, which is a awesome plus for Bandai to include that. Now for the transformation, you only need one part right here, this little connector that's going to be for the waist. And here we have the Phoenix mode, which to me is by far the coolest transformation of any mobile suit in the Gundam universe. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and take it off the stand real quick. Now the only problems I do have with this, uh, so far this little piece right here in the front, this doesn't want to stay in all the way. So like I'll, I'll click it right there and then just like a little bit of a wiggle, it'll keep popping out. So it's not like a very, very sturdy uh, connection point when it comes to the Dodge rifle. Uh, also the, uh, the legs right here, they, they kind of droop down after a while. So as you can see like that, so you're gonna have to like maybe put some glue on the joints, uh, let it dry and then that'll give it a tighter, um, a tighter connection point but it's really up to you um, you know how you want to go ahead and do it now there is one feature about the legs that kind of confused me they have this little connecting point right here uh, I don't think they reference it in the manual at all I kind of looked through it I didn't see any kind of reference points um, so I don't understand what that part is supposed to be maybe it's supposed to be like a claw whenever he's in his robot mode uh, so that way he can grab his enemies but overall I'm not really too sure um, but the connecting point is really solid up in here. It can definitely connect to any kind of action base like you've seen uh, you know, just recently. Um, and these wings are fantastic. I don't have any issues with them at all. I know some people will complain that they're loose. Um, I had like one that, were, that was loose, like one of these. Uh, I think it was this one in particular. Uh, so I switched this one out with another um, F funnel. And you know, I guess that just kind of worked for them to be sturdy. Uh, but overall, this is really fantastic. And I really, really want another um, H2 Magnum just so that way I can have one in the Phoenix mode and then one in the mobile suit mode. Okay, what are my thoughts on this kit overall? Well, my final thoughts are gonna be number positivity. 
Yes, a couple of things on here, like you know, some of the joints, uh, mainly in the legs, uh, and some of the little the little um, F funnels are going to be fairly loose. But it's nothing that a little bit of glue or nail polish could easily fix. Um, so with that out of the way, I think this is a very great addition uh, to anyone's collection, especially if you love anything from like the Gundam Bill Fighters line, or if you like anything from the Gundam Age line. Now I'm a huge fan of both, so this is pretty much going to be a welcome addition to my overall collection. Uh, now for the general public, I'm not really too sure how people view uh, the Gundam Age series, or how they view the Gundam Bill Diver series, or maybe this kit has enough difference from the Gundam Age, uh, you know, the Gundam Age 2, that they'd be like, hey, you know, I, I'm not really too much of a fan of the Gundam Age uh, series, but I really, really like this uh, design, and I really like Gundam Build Divers, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up anyways. So overall, hey, I'm very, very happy. There's enough new parts on here. There's a, there's a lot of uh, pretty cool, bright colors on here to make this a very unique suit. Uh, so I would say, guys, if you can afford, I think it's like maybe 17 maybe 18 dollars um i would say if you could afford that go ahead and purchase this um it's really awesome it has a lot of different gimmicks a transformation it's extremely simplistic um but that's really it for me guys i just want to go ahead and give my thoughts out there for this kit um you know let me know in the comments below what y'all think if you purchased the kit already or if you're planning to to get it let me know what your thoughts are um so without further ado guys that's going to be it for this review uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, uh, ring that bell for future notifications, and I'll be seeing y'all in the pose video for this Gundam as well as in the next review. I'll see y'all guys later. Bye-bye.